All right, guys, Hatch Karma here again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. The major three qualifiers are well underway, and Optic Dashi now, the main AR of that team, has made it very clear that Shameless season may well be about to begin. With the snaking being rife in the CDL, we might see more of it from Dashi today. And Scum also gives his thoughts on Dashi being the new main AR for Optic, with Ghost being very willing indeed to play the flex all the time. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Thought this is pretty cool from Jacob Bell as well. I never really thought about this idea. I think there's a world in which, though, for some of the upcoming games, there could be, you know, of course, with Scott Return, there could be some sort of king edition for some games or something. I don't know. Here's a, you know, Formal Infinite Warfare cover. Even Scrappy Modern Warfare 2 is pretty funny. We'll talk about Scrappy in a second, actually, because there's some more drama with him. As, of course, it's not a massive surprise at this point. Just wanted to mention as well that a lot of the guys at the top of the ranked play ladder are either convicted cheaters or have, like, or it's very much highly imagined that they are cheaters. This guy was number one briefly. I think people pointed out that on his CMG and on his GB, this is his GB page here that's, I mean, you can see his rank has been reset because pretty sure we got banned or reset or something happens. And uh, there was also this one from this guy who was then number one and uh, Looty who's kind of like the EU kind of cheating commissioner really or the cheater police, I suppose. Kind of, well, he points out that, uh, yeah, this guy pretty obviously was cheating and I think even the, the CMG guy said that this guy had been banned or something like that. So not really a massive surprise. Unfortunately, there's a load of cheaters at the top of the rank Play that would frustration because Treg have done a great job with the ranks play, but they can't be the ones to implement the kind of anti cheat into Infinity Wars game that doesn't really seem to do anything right now. So I guess uh, that's just how it's going to be. But I know that in even like the mid ranks upwards, people are running into an awful lot of cheaters, especially the pros. It's unfortunate. Hopefully, they can deal with this over time. Thankfully, though, there are some legit players on these ladders, especially Ghosty, who is the second player after Draza to get his name onto the top 250 ladder, and then Envoy gets in the mix as well later on and also then Clayster was successful later in the evening so he won his game against Thieves and then I guess hopped straight on the rank play ladder to rank up and he got himself on the top 250 as well and another cool idea here from Jacob Hale right because I know in Valorant and stuff when uh, the players let's say they win an event or something they'll get a banner on their profile that will show like okay they won this event on this year whatever the case is and this could be a cool opportunity as well here because you know okay it's cool to see Clayster in the top 250 leaderboard here and see his um, you know, face and his team and all this type of stuff but okay it doesn't really give that much information if you're a brand new player that doesn't know who Clayster is you'll think okay Clayster plays for the Vegas Legion like who is this guy like you wouldn't know that he's a three-time world champion you wouldn't know that he's you know a veteran of the game he's been playing for well over a decade like you know these type of factors could be interesting to, to add in if they could have some sort of banner under his profile on the right hand side that would say something like you know the 2015 2019 and 2020 world champion maybe that'd be pretty cool as well speaking of Clayster he confirms yes Yesterday that Nagafen is indeed their new offensive coordinator. So not the coach. So Theory is still the coach, but Naga is the offensive coordinator. Now I don't think this is necessarily just offensive round on search and destroy. I think it's probably more around how to break hard points. What's the setup? Okay, let's say you're trying to break a hill. What's the setup for it? Where should you go? How long should you wait for your players to be there? Get one kill, then do this. This type of stuff. Quite an interesting idea to have a player that's specifically dedicated to kind of the offensive part of Call of Duty and I mean he reckons that he's been a great help for the team says he loves the contrast between Naga and Theory wonder if Naga Fen's actually getting paid by the Vegas leader which is a bit of a concern for me but um, I mean look Naga Fed already and 2Real have come into the team and quickly they've had a lot of success at least in matches their scrims haven't been going so well apparently but it doesn't matter if you're beating the world champions in a match as they did last night want to talk about Toronto versus Boston again though because of course Beans individually didn't have the greatest series last night but nonetheless this is why I think a lot of people are asking questions about Toronto right now because Beans had a terrible series by his standards at least in terms of slaying and awakening is unbelievable the SMG duo so fun to watch but if Beans played at like the normal level you might expect from him and okay he was still making decent plays and was communicating well and bringing the hype and energy and stuff to the team even though the Beans were getting fried on a normal series you would think Boston could be even you know, slightly scarier than this and Toronto from an individual standpoint like where are they going to be shortly enough especially because Beans here like 
like he had 12 kills and 13 assists on that map four. This has only happened a few times this season where a player's got more assists than they got kills, and it's very rare for that to end up in a win. Envoy and Beans, the only two of this, I mean, crazy stat to be honest to even track, but I mean, yeah, Brian and I think Tim were actually tracking this stuff. So yeah, pretty interesting that out of all the times it's happened, there's not been that many times, the eighth time this season, only two of those has been a victory, and that Beans and Boston was one of them last night. And Scrubby says, absolute joke of a series. And that's the thing, right? Scrappy pretty much fried last night in this series. He had like a 1.3 or something, but the rest of the team, okay, there's questions about where exactly the team's going wrong or where they need to improve. I think Kleenex individually has been great as well. So the question is whether Insight is playing too slow or whether on an individual level, Stanley just isn't where he was at the start of the season. So I wonder what Scrappy's thinking about here. And uh, look, Scrappy isn't going to stop talking trash anytime soon, even if he's losing. He's still frying and playing well, but the team isn't doing so well right now. So Bean says, so rookie of the year so far, right? After his phenomenal performance in that series last night, fried on every single map in the series, and Scrappy's like, look, yo, GG's, but you are terrible. And Bean drops in with the hold that Thanos Fortnite gift. So pretty entertaining stuff, I can't lie. And I'm looking forward to when these two match up again, and just to see how Toronto could continue in their progression, because, yeah, they're in an interesting spot as a team right now, there's no doubt. And even Toronto, they were kind of talking about, or talking trash on Boston back in January, and then Boston hit them with the whole scrappy trash talk type idea here, which is always entertaining. And even last night, it was Rocker who'd called subletters frauds at Major 2. Now subletters, you know, bounce back and call them frauds here after beating them last night. So crazy stuff. And tonight, we will have some massive games as well. Four games tonight, especially with Hook, of course, now on Optic Texas, going up against his old team and replacement in, well, Exceed and the Los Angeles Grillers. Before we get to that point, though, I wanted to mention this, which was kind of pointed out on Skies' stream. So uh, this isn't like a massive leak or anything, but it's interesting to note. So Skies was on stream the other day, and you could see on his battle.net thing here that Illy had been away for seven days. At the time, you can see Doug offline for five hours, Hydra, Stanley, TJ, etc., etc. But Illy away for seven days, which basically means, I mean, if he'd have played COD at all in the last week, therefore, he would have been appearing here. It would have said offline for, you know, as it says for Doug and all this type of stuff, like fire offline for 20 minutes, right? So the fact that Illy's been gone for seven days is pretty interesting, like kind of showing that he doesn't seem like Illy's really played any COD the last few days, which is, you know, it's strange really for Illy individually. I wonder what's going on there and it, like, what his future actually looks like, just because Illy used to be like the biggest grinder ever, right? This guy was always playing search shells. You guys remember, he won the World Championship in Modern Warfare 2019 or 2020, I guess the World Championship was. Porker did like 300 grand. I mean, obviously the money didn't arrive immediately, but he just won it. And then later in the day, he was asking for search and destroy shells. Like he wasn't done for the day. Like the, the champs final match wasn't the last game he played of the day. He was still hobbing on for, for challenge later in the day against randoms. So that's how, you know, much of a grinder it he was. And now he's taken a whole week off cards. Like, I don't know what his future looks like. He's obviously not been trialing with other teams or anything. So yeah, interesting situation. I thought I'd just point out for you guys in terms of what the future holds for Illy and whether he's going to be on the optic bench for, well, a long time to come, potentially. I guess we'll see how that goes. Now, this is what Dash had to say last night. So he's playing ranked 12, of course, making his way up the leaderboard. Board. And um, I mean, yeah, he was playing with some of the TST guys up against, I mean, Parasite and Co at a time. And I saw this clip put on YouTube, but Dashi actually tweeted it out himself and says, I know MC, that being Selly, of course, would be proud. Shameless season begins. So this is the thing. A lot of pros right now realize that the snaking has got to such a point that, uh, you know, of course, Draza, Selly, and these guys are using it a lot. It's kind of like you can do it too situation. If you're not using it, you're not really trying. And it seems like Dashi is now willing to go all out as well because he said right here that shameless season is beginning doesn't matter who he's playing now potentially the snakes are going to come through and uh look maybe it's been a long time it's coming really for some of these guys that have kind of been holding off using the snaking to get to a point now where everyone's using it and it's kind of got to be used if you actually want to take your competition level seriously and this is what dashi and also scump has to say on dashi's current role nice thank you prison flag weak dead nice this one's open, open, open and one's open. white truck. White open truck. Up. Close, close, white close. Truck. White truck probably gonna close again, close again. Telling close. Wow. They call me Cell. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> they call no, me Cell. Dude. No. <laughs> See what I mean? We get good. I'm, gonna start. I'm actually gonna be shameless from now on. I swear to God. <laughs> As he drops <laughs> well, now you got now you got Brandon being able to play that like hard main and. I don't really like how there's roles in Call of Duty nowadays. I think that both ARs should be capable of doing 
pretty much everything. Because you think about it, like, you're not always going to be in a position to be the main AR. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's going to be times where you're in a flex spot or vice versa, and you're, you're trying to anchor a spawn. I think that this is going to allow Brandon to play more of that straight up, like, anchory kill type AR. Yeah. And it's going to allow Ghosty to to kind of get in that mix. And he already said he, he likes to run the sub. He's a flex player, and he likes to run at a good speed. Yeah. And with Kyler and Ann already, I think uh, – I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I can call it an improvement. Because obviously Ender, like, had a couple bad series, whatever you want to say about Ender, but Ender also provides – a lot of intangibles on the team. Yeah. And it's stuff that people don't see. But if they thought they needed to make a change, they obviously thought they needed to make a change. Does she even tweet at Selium later on? Yo, peep my clip and let me know what you think of my form, right? So, yeah, pretty funny. I mean, obviously, Dashi's in a bit of a trolley mood here. But nonetheless, kind of saying that, well, shameless season is beginning and now it's time to go all out with the snaking. It's an interesting concept, nonetheless. And obviously, Octane would say that it's all Selium's fault. Whereas, uh, you know, a BT might say that, well, Draz is actually the prime King Cobra as it stands. Thought it was interesting comments as well from Skump Discuss the fact that Ghosty is very much a flex player. He's very much willing to run an SMG of Vaznib if necessary. And Dashi can like fully inhabit the main AR position. But I don't think that means that Dashi's going to play slow by any means. Dashi's still going to be fast paced. Whether it works out well, we'll have to see today. Because Texas have a difficult run of matches. Like their last week is against the Subliners and FaZe. I'm pretty sure the last two games of this set of qualifiers. So tonight is effectively a must win, I think, up against the Los Angeles Grillers. Of course, you look at the standings right now Opticar clear of LAG and LAG since forming their new team with the kind of academy players coming through have kind of fallen off a little bit and regressed certainly at the major but Optic do need to win I would say tonight and before we discuss those series just wanted to give some credit here to Cinder and also Brian Sats for bringing up these numbers for a pretty phenomenal run of well performances in his career as a C well as a CDL coach and I think even pre CDL in the CWL days he was coaching the Enigma 6 team that they came top four at champs in Black Ops 4 all right, which is a crazy result given that team. I believe Sender was the coach of that squad at the time. And then since coming into the CDL, he joined the Chicago Huntsmen. He has an average placing of about four, a bit of a correction here. His series record 95 in 55, five finals appearances, won four of them. And of course, well, part of that was on the Chicago Huntsmen and Optic Chicago after that wasn't so successful. And then since joining the New York Subliners last year, had a lot of success since then and even, of course, so far this season as well. So yeah, interesting one for Sender because I know that he got a lot of trash from the Optic fans last year where they wouldn't do so well and maybe the well maybe the argument was at the time that the team wasn't really listening to Sender rather than Sender wasn't giving good advice and now he's in a team like the Subliners where he seems to be greatly appreciated he's um well at least in terms of CDL coach performances Sender's got to be right up there people look at Crowder people have looked at Rambo as like the goat or whatever but Sender's making a name for himself on the sneaky as he usually is let's talk about the matches though for today so four games coming up four massive games some of them it should be easy easier to call than the others. But it'll be exciting to see a lot of these new teams in action. So Boston play again after beating Toronto against London. I can't imagine this is going to be particularly close. I've no idea why London didn't make a change. Maybe they can prove us wrong tonight by actually doing something, but um, it's doubtful. Then FaZe play Florida. Brand new Florida team have the trial by fire here up against the Atlanta FaZe. Never easy to have your first game with this new team. I do think Florida should get better with this roster, certainly in the respawns. Whether their search is going to be good enough to beat FaZe, I don't know. I'll take a 3-1 phase here. Phase can be a bit sketchy online and also phase have a relatively easy run here in the qualifiers compared to their opponents so they might try some interesting map mode combinations and stuff because they always qualify in the winner's bracket anyway. Then we've got Optic versus Los Angeles. Gorilla's big series for the hook reason right after of course like Gorilla's dropped hook and now he's an Optic to see how that goes. See if he can prove them wrong to a certain degree just to see how the slang of this Optic team goes right because I honestly see Optic and Boston in kind of a similar spot in a way. They're there is some brain on the team, obviously, but there's a lot of gunny on the team. The team is more gunny than it is brain, let's say. And Boston are in a similar boat to, I think, where Optic can be. Optic are probably a slightly pack-a-punch version of that Boston team. But there's a chance that Optic just turn up here with Ghosty in the lineup and just absolutely slay Los Angeles Grillers off the park. And it doesn't matter what they're doing in terms of rotations or making good decisions because they're going to have all the kills. So we'll see if that works or whether it doesn't work or whether LA Gorillas can manage to put an upset in this one. And then Surge Rocker. Again, it's Surge a team that I expected to change, like London. They haven't. They play Minnesota, who lost a heartbreaker game five round 11 yesterday up against, uh, of course, the New York Subliners. So yeah, I don't know. I think I might take Rocker game five. We'll see if Surge's S&D can improve because 
because I'm sure that's what they've been working on. And they got close to winning some at the end of stage two, but still failed to do so and didn't win a single search in the entirety of stage two. And they were on a terrible run in that game mode, of course. And Rocker, despite losing two of them yesterday to Subliners, I'd still expect them to somehow squeak out a game five win here. But very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.